Okay, let's get started. Welcome to La Scuola International School and thank you for so much for joining us today at our spotlight event about how children learn math at La Scuola. My name is Donia Solari. I'm the director of admissions here at our beautiful international preschool through eighth grade school. And my son is actually in eighth grade. He is one of Neelam's students. We'll be hearing from Neelam soon. Today, you will hear from uh, Sally Peterson, our director of teaching and learning, as, ver as well as several of our elementary and middle school math teachers. Uh, they will all introduce themselves in a minute. We Today, we'll be going over some common questions about our approach to mathematics, and the teachers are ready to give you examples of how we do it. There'll be time for Q&A after the presentation, and feel free to put any questions that you have in the chat. We will address them later. I just want to also mention that we are recording this presentation so that um, people who can't join us today can, can view it at a later time. All right, thank you. Sally, I see you on my screen first. Hi, my name is Sally Mian Peterson and it's wonderful to see you. Um, we're so glad you're, you're here to learn a little bit more about our math program. And um, this is my eighth year at La Scuola and again, glad you're here. Thank you. Let's see, Alice, you're next on my screen. I'm Alice and I'm a grade three teacher. I've also been a grade four teacher at the school. Um, so I've been here for a couple of years now and I teach math and English and in Korea, all sorts. Wonderful. Valeria. Hi, my name is Valeria Koenigsberg and I'm a first grade teacher. Um, currently teaching the homeroom first grade Verdi. And I am happy to be here. Great. And I see Tim. Okay. Hi there. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Tim, obviously, Tim Cooper. I've been here. This is my ninth year at La Scuola. I actually taught preschool five years before this, and I've taught elementary, second, and third grade. This year, I'm a grade two teacher. Great. And Neelam. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Spotlight Maths. I'm Neelam Kanduri. I'm taking science and maths in middle school. Basically six, seven, and eight. Great, thank you. All right, let's get started. I think Sally, you have a first slide. Why Singapore math? Yeah, so Singapore math is um, a math program. It is mathematics um, in Singapore. We call it Singapore math because the origins came from Singapore. But at the Ministry of Education in Singapore, it's simply their math program. And in the 1990s, they took a very deep look at um, how do we reach more learners? How do we make mathematics meaningful for every student? Because their goal as a country is that every student um, finishes their, their education with um, an understanding and um, thinking of math as a tool so they could solve problems. So um, problem solving and thinking logically is at the heart of the Singapore math program. And La Scuola uh, selected Singapore math because it in supports the inquiring mind. Um, and number sense, and as you'll learn um, in this presentation, developing number sense through a process of working with, with materials and then designing um, visuals around that math number sense and then being able to move to the abstract is a path that the students take with every math concept. So with that, um, uh, the Singapore Math Partnership with La Scuola brings joy into each student's class. Thank you. All right. Great. Thank you, Sally. Um, so we, uh, with the Singapore Math Program, we. We want to develop confident and capable math learners. So here, this is an example of in second grade, uh, number talk, and we do that for many um, subjects. For this is for addition, we did it with 27 plus six here. So a big part of developing this deep conceptual understanding is being able to explain how maybe a strategy. And also with the number talks, a big emphasis is also just finding not more than not one, but maybe two or three strategies. So finding multiple ways to solve one problem. That's also a huge emphasis with the program. So we, we really want to develop their conceptual knowledge before they can understand a procedure such as 
subtraction or addition with renaming, which we've done later on after this. So here's a video I think we have of uh, this, this child in second grade explaining how they added 27 plus. Okay. Oh, good morning. Um, today I'm going to um, teach you a few different methods how to sum an equation that equals 27 plus 6. My first method is to break down the numbers like 20 plus 7 plus 6. Then it's easier for me to solve because now I can see 7 plus 6, it's 13. And my method is 13 plus 13. Twenty, and then I solve it under each other, like three plus zero, three, and then I do one plus two, which is three, so it's thirty-three. And Tara Rose, um, the one and the two, what are they representing? Well, I when I do math, I always have a paper, and I always. Right, one and two, so I know my methods because it's like it's always easier if you plan your um, explanation down to numbers. And then I also have the fine, I also have a final step. Okay. Um, but this one is the First thing I always do, I write a question mark in a box because I don't know yet before I solve. But then as soon as I solve it, I write it down. Twenty-seven plus six equals thirty-three. Thank you. And Tanner Rose, I'm going to come back and I'll, I'll be better with my question. Um, so the three and the zero are in the ones place. Mm -hmm. What are the one and the two stand representing to you? Well, um, sometimes when I do three digit, which is HTO, hundreds, tens, ones, but sometimes I just have ones and tens. I think I'm going to hold on to this because this is a great map for me. This is how I do it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bona giornata. Okay. All right. So I'll just say, uh, as you can see, uh, maybe all of us learn maybe an operation like uh, subtraction or addition, and maybe we didn't even know that what the ones were or the tens or the hundreds. So this, this example shows just and explaining it also really building up that conceptual knowledge. So they know they're actually renaming the ones or or the tens in this in this case. So as you go on further along in the program and do higher level math, you are still a, you still develop those those problem solving skills for much more complex problems. Great, thank you. And there are more benefits, Sally. Yes, so on this, this emphasis on the greater depth of understanding, um, it's the variety of learning experiences. So what we'll emphasize in the course of learning a new concept is the students are going to be working with concrete items. And there could be two or three in the classroom that they'll move through in order to develop this concrete understanding. They're going to have experiences of a number talk with their teacher. They're going to have experiences with writing in their math journal, with doing practice in their math book, with playing games. And that variety of learning experiences, it is what is going to, um, you know, um, consolidate this understanding. 
And um, uh, one person in the mathematics field that we also um, align and carefully um, stay in tune with is Jo Bowler. She's a professor, Dr. Jo Bowler at Stanford University. And she speaks about this concept that for children, just say, for example, they're learning about addition. It takes a big part of their energy and their thinking. And when students understand the concept, they can then, it compresses in their brain. And so if they're memorizing, they won't be able to retain it as well as when they've completely understood the concept. And so, for example, we see the second grader in first grade, they'll take a lot of energy and time um, and thinking around addition. In second grade, it becomes a little more compressed. So when they're in third and fourth grade, when they're doing larger multiplication fractions and decimals, that conceptual understanding of addition and subtraction are compressed. So again, the variety of experiences support that deep understanding of concepts. Thank you. Okay. okay, so learning how to problem solve. Um, and this is where um, we're having number talks. So it's very social in the math class. And um, I think that's one real distinguishing factor that there is a lot of conversation, there's note taking, there's a lot of language. So we have the language of numbers and we also have the language and dialogue between the teacher and the students and the students and each other. And so through that note taking and through that dialogue and having um, listening to their peers, um, they're developing their toolbox as well as all the concrete tools that the, the teachers introduce throughout a concept. And I uh, have this quote on the slide. Um, there's a, a woman we've worked with for years and she's really making it clear that that, that concrete touching and being able to, pick, to like visualize is going to help us with the abstract. It really consolidate that understanding. So that abstract nature of lining up algorithms, it's not gonna seem as scary because there's this basis of having touched and talked about them. Great, thank you. Here's one of the questions that comes up very often. Um, how do you differentiate for different levels of interest in math inside the classroom? Okay. I think I'll just speak to this, um, 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 that we make it fun, meaningful, and relevant. If we have 15 to 20, 25 students in the classroom, each student has a different lens that they're looking through math. Some gravitate to the numbers, some gravitate to the context, some gravitate to what is the story behind this. So by making it fun, and it could be in the form of games. It could be um, in the form of touching and building. And we make it relevant. And in this case, we're an IB, we're a primary years program. Our program is founded on the children's questions. It's founded on inquiry and the relevance of our inquiry. So we will bring, we'll integrate our math into our inquiry, our social studies, our science, whenever possible. And um, again, we, um, I mean, math is the Singapore math. There's a quote by a, um, a gentleman that worked in the Ministry of Education. And he says, we are not teaching math. We are teaching thinking through the math medium. So in inquiry, we can take that math lens and use our understanding of addition, subtraction, division, and start making connections um, um, through that way. And um, there was, a, I have a one little story. There's a student I'm working with in first grade. I'm in the first grade classroom right now. And um, she was super resistant. She's like, no, I, I'm not sure I want to do math. There's only one type of math I, I like. And um, my job as an educator is to understand where, where, can she, where she, can she connect through math. And it turns out it was through sports. And as a result, um, um, her parents are now saying she's at home telling all sorts of number stories. So connecting with that student through the math lens is powerful. Thank you. Next question. Times tables. We often get that question. Yeah. Um, 
think this might be my last slide for a while, but um, I'll share a little bit about that we do absolutely um, um, teach times tables. How we do it is um, really um, back to that conceptual understanding. If a student is understanding the idea of addition and subtraction and repeated addition, they have a strong number sense. They can be flexible with their thinking. So when someone is saying a seven times eight, they'll be able to think, well, I know seven times seven and I can add eight more. Or they may think of it as five times seven is 35 and I'm gonna add two more sets or three more sets. So it's this idea of understanding and being flexible with that knowledge as opposed to memorizing remote, rote, rotely. And that's the big difference. We are not asking students to look at a table and to memorize um, without thinking about why the numbers are in relation that way. So it's essential in third and fourth grade um, and what we approach it without that rote memorization. I think Alice, thank you, Sally. I think Alice was gonna share an example how she does it in her classroom. Yeah, so in third grade, which is where I'm currently teaching, um, it's beginning to be a focus of ours and we are just about to start the multiplication unit, but I wanted them to start before then just so that they can really build that foundation. Um, and as Sally was saying, it's really more about them understanding how those, why those numbers are in the times tables rather than rote learning. So we do something, <coughs> We do something each morning in grade three, which is, I call it times table aerobics. Um, and it's almost like a backwards version of, of learning it. So we do it more about factors. So for example, I'll put some music on, we'll all stand up. It's kind of a, a fun way of, of doing it. And I will talk through the numbers. I will sort of say some numbers, like I might say the number 12 or number 15. And for each times table that there is, there's a different um, action that they do. So for example, if it's in the two times table, they have to jump in the air. Um, and so I'll say a number and I want them to try and think backwards and think, right, which times table is this number in? If it's in more than one, how am I going to do three actions at once? Um, and it gets them moving, they really enjoy it. And again, it's not the rote learning so much as them actually thinking and making the connection and and noticing the patterns in the number. So if it's a number in the two times table, they're going to recognize that it has an even number at the end. So then it's therefore something they have to do a jumping action. So there's all sorts of different ways we do it, but that's just one example. Thank you. Another question that we hear often is, how do you challenge students with advanced math skills or interest? I think that one is me again. <laughs> Um, yeah, so obviously we, we have lots of students and actually we like to challenge all of our students um, if they have sort of these advanced skills or interests. Um, and actually the way we do it is instead of moving on to a new unit or a new sort of learning skill, we like to just go deeper into the same one that they've been working on um, and see if they can see how they really do understand it. And how we do that is through lots of sort of problem solving. Um, and reasoning challenges. So I like to do, in my class, I like to do a lot of prove it challenges. So um, I will sort of come up with a theory about a number or something we've been doing. And I would say, does this rule always apply or can you prove it? Or can you prove that I'm not right with my theory? Um, and sort of having these discussions and these open sort of investigations um, has been something that I've noticed um, my students really enjoy. This is, these pictures are actually from a from an investigation I did a couple of weeks ago where we were doing an addition and subtraction unit, but they sort of mastered the, the skill of actually doing the addition and subtraction, but I wanted to know whether they really understood the numbers. So, um, so we did a challenge based on um, a, something called, if you've heard of palindromes in English, it's a, a word when it's written and read the same way backwards as it is forwards. So for example, the number 151 is 151. Um, and my challenge to them was that I had a theory that all of, I could make any number a palindromic number. So a number that started the same way as it went backwards, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, and they had to prove or disprove my theory. And they spent a really long time, as you can see, um, sort of trying to show that I was wrong, <laughs> um, which they really, really enjoyed. And that kind of thing, um, this really works on growth mindset skills. Um, a lot of, uh, it can be quite frustrating when you know, you go through a workbook and you, you get it all right. But what I'm what I'm doing is I'm saying, actually, 
I want you to now prove it. I want you to, I'm going to give you a challenge that you won't necessarily be able to get first time round. It won't be an easy sort of tick the box, it's done. It will be something that maybe you have to do two or three times before you get an answer. Um, and for those with sort of advanced skills or interests, that can be quite frustrating, but that's how they get to that next level of learning. And I think, and that's sort of how we do it. Um, yeah, how we do it sort of with this program. Thank you. Another question that comes up is, what can I do to support my child at home if I learned math a different way? Sally, I think. Yeah, um, you know, that's great. So you'll be, you know, as you um, share with your child as they're working on a problem, you can always, you're, the way you've learned and if, um, is absolutely fine to share. Um, what we want to do is we really, whether a parent is in el a parent of an elementary student, a middle school student, high school, is that we want to show the enthusiasm and curiosity and even if we did experience some fear at some point, we really want to put this enthusiasm and curiosity in front um, to really inspire your child because that will be a very important bond and because you're their go-to fan and support. So keeping it positive um, is essential. Uh, we always have classroom documentation. So every week you'll have a window into particular math strategies, topics, and you'll see children at work. So it's a great resource. We have a parent education evening when our partner, Beth Curran, will, um, she's a consultant in Singapore Math. She'll take us through so much fun around um, under, um, experiencing the math, a Singapore math approach. And we always have resources to offer to families, um, whether it's video or articles, any research papers. Uh, we are here to support um, you to, um, you know, develop any um, the knowledge around the Singapore Math Program. Thank you. And now we're going to go into a little bit more how this looks um, across the grades. This approach. Oh. I'll simply start by saying the La School and um, Singapore Math Program is aligned with the Common Core Standards. So as we start each year, we are aligning with those standards. Um, and so we're, um, then we map it out through the year. And there's a particular sequence um, of math concepts throughout the academic year for the students. And then the one other very important part is the approach. So we, um, with Singapore Math, they have the concrete, pictorial, and abstract. And that pictorial part is really the game changer. That is the identifier for Singapore math. The pictorial is taking some work with the concrete, which are the manipulatives, which could be cubes or any type of item we're touching and moving. And then the children are able to visual design that concept. And that's through either number bonds, which you'll hear about, or the bar model. And then with that pictorial understanding, the children can move into the abstract. And often in many math cur curriculums, there's a jump between concrete and abstract. And this again is the identifier and um, what we find super powerful day after day at La Scuola. Thank you. So I'm gonna speak a bit about um, the, how we do math in first grade. Um, the, the beginning of their math journey with Singapore math. Um, and as Sally mentioned, um, the approach is concrete, pictorial, and abstract. Uh, here I've included some examples of uh, an activity we did recently in their math journals, which offered an opportunity for differentiation, um, for independent thinking, agency. Um, the kids met this challenge with a lot of enthusiasm because the idea behind it was they were to create their own number stories, um, which means they were to think of real life objects or animals or people and create a subtraction problem based on that. And so here you can see some examples of, um, you have one student is using the concrete, she's using beads that she found in the, uh, or in the classroom um, to uh, check to her work. Um, she identified that there were seven um, beads, which represent then in her drawing the birds. Valeria, you froze a little bit there. 
Um, where did I, where did you last hear me? Um, just when you, you said about the birds, they... Oh, sorry. Seven, seven, there were seven birds originally, three, um, four flew away and three were left over. Um, the next example as well, it was about eating lemons. So six uh, lemons were first bought, um, five were eaten and one was left over. So that's the concrete working both with drawing and with concrete materials within the classroom. Um, then the next step is the pictorial, which is the number bond, um, which is a way to organize um, the relationship between the different quantities and numbers, uh, really understanding the meaning, the deep understanding of the meaning of what these numbers represent within a subtraction equation. So this. Uh, sorry. Um, so we, 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 we use the same tool of the number bond for both addition and subtraction. And it, it, in this way, it allows for a great flexibility of thinking as well. As you can see, they've made the connection between um, adding the two parts together to make the whole or reversing it and taking the whole, taking away a part and, and seeing what part is left over. So. This helps them visualize what it actually means when then they pass to the abstract, which is the equation. Um, so I asked them to represent in all three ways um, their subtraction story. And um, they also, some of them also in, uh, developed other strategies and you sh showed other strategies, such as the number line. We've talked about counting up and counting back. That's another strategy we've developed to approach subtraction and addition. So now we were, we're gonna show you a video of how they, um, the children collaborate in the classroom to explain these concepts to, to each other. Okay. Okay, allora, ci puoi raccontare una storia, per favore? Io Olivia poi fare un number bond che rappresenta questa storia? Sì. Benissimo. Questa volta c'erano quattro carotti e um, una persona ha tolto um, tre quanti di nascono. Uh -huh. Allora, Olivia, perché hai costruito il number bond così? Cosa rappresenta? Uh -huh. So a whole number is how many there were in um, class first, mm -hmm. and then the three is because the man took three away, uh -huh. and then the question mark is because how I think the sound might have cut out at the end of the video. Um, but basically, Sienna proposed the story. Olivia represented it using a number bond and explained the process behind that. And then Layla came in and um, represented it with a subtraction. Okay. Now we're going to hear a little bit about the upper primary years. Okay, yeah, I can, I can speak to that. So um, um, I, before I explain what a number talk is, um, and we, should, we saw the example there, and then we also use a lot of concrete manipulatives such as uh, base 10 blocks. I don't know if you can see my screen, but we have these base 10 blocks here that we use, especially when we start getting into addition in second grade. And then we can also use place value disks with um, place value charts. So that really helps the kids develop their, their conceptual knowledge as I explained before. And I'll give you an example 
one one when we did uh, addition with uh, renaming one of the kids in, in our class was having a lot of trouble understanding the concept of renaming the ones or the tens and and but after a bit of practice and uh and working with especially the place value discs he finally said oh i get it because before he was with this one problem he said well how why is it there why is it that there's a um 100 at the end for me for my problem i had 200s and so he went through the problem again with the place value discs and he realized okay yeah you actually have to rename the hundred so you take one of the hundreds away and so this, this shows how this really bridges the gap the the pictorial representation of place value discs helps uh bridge the gap to more abstract so now he's able to do many more problems in the classroom he has much more confidence so this really gives him quite a bit of support Another uh, thing we use is, as you can see an example here, not another visual strategy, visual representation is a bar model here. So this helps a lot with, um, especially with word problems. So problem solving for that, to give them a, a representation of the problem before um, figuring it out. Okay. So, and then also we have mental math, which we cover throughout the grades and is something we help to build up their math facts. Um, and for example, we have, we do in the classroom magic thumb, where, they, where if you, you start, maybe you have the kids add up by two as a warm up in the beginning. They can go two, four, six, eight, and so on and so on. And they can go down as well. And also we do a lot of math games to help build up their, their mental math. Uh, we do make 10, a lot of make 10 strategies um, where they have nine cards on the table and then they have to make 10 with two of those cards. Um, and also it's bilingual. So it's in Italian, the instructions in Italian, but also the textbooks we use are, are in English. So it's a, also both. Perfect, thank you. Okay, Neelam, will you tell us a little bit about how things work in middle school? Yeah, thank you, Duna. Um, I will be talking, taking you from primary years to the middle school. It's a transition time in grade six. And, but we move in the same um, ideology, pedagogy is same. We work in the inquiries. So the student take the agency, they come up with what they want to learn. But when we say that we are working in the project, in the, it does not mean that we are not going to cover the content in that. We do have the four strands of maths to be covered. The syllabus is there, but as a teacher, it's a challenge for us to put those, you know, component under those unit, under those projects that we complete the curriculum of that grade level. Now, moving further, as I said, it's a project, it's an inquiry based. They come up with the idea what they want to do, and then we move further, we design it, we work it together. So they take that, you know, planning part there comes a curiosity they come up with the questions and those questions we categorize them into three categories conceptual first come the factual then come conceptual and debatable as we move on with these questions it takes our inquiry in depth and as they are in middle school we explore it more they research they investigate during the investigation they identify the patterns, relationship, or comes to the conjecture. From there, those conjecture, they will transform, communicate to a general rule or maybe a numerical formula. From that formula, they will apply that formula in the real life context to use that. So that whole connection is there. It's not just given a theorem or given a formula. They themselves mm -hmm. identify, generalize it, use it and resolve the real life context or a word problem or solve the problem which is there in front of that. I was just given a story of my class of last year. As you can see the picture on this slide, there are three pictures in that. This is the story of last year grade eight with me. And this project was about geometry and trigonometry. You can see in the first one, the kids are working and making something. So they came up with, they want to do trigonometry. They have heard about it. It was like something amazing, Neelam. 
what is that trigonometry we want to take it and we have heard an SSAT exam it's there and it's like something very complicated and all okay fine even I don't know more about it let's explore it out so we started with that and then they have looked into even how the trigonometry and what is it themselves it was not given to them they planned it out the Pythagoras theorem they came up with it's a trigonometry three-sided figure okay the triangle now the three side, what is the relation between those three sides? So we worked on that. Then they identified that relation, Pythagoras theorem. How can we explain those Pythagoras? There are different ways to explain that or to show that, modeling that out. They did that, the presentation as a group. And then we move further. You can see the first diagram, clinometer. They are making a clinometer. With that clinometer, they could calculate and you can see in the second picture, they are in the basketball court and they are trying to find the height of the school building. So we can use this formula, this way to find the height of the building, which we cannot measure it. So this was the actual learning. And you can see in the third picture there, the groups came back to the classroom and they were sharing their findings to each other. They have calculated and the summative task towards the end when I had my task, I designed in such a way that there is the second building next to our school. Can we find out the height of that building? So that was our task. And when we are finding it out, it has to be closer to each other. So it makes a real life connection of math, what I'm learning and where I'm using. It's not abstract. It's not just you know, for formulas or for numbers or for levels, I have to do it. No, it's fun. It's challenge. It's like interesting thing I'm doing. So this is one of the story. And we had a lovely project last, last year, like a cooking project in that they have used their learning of ratio, fraction and percentage. Again, they have, you know, the recipes they came up with, they cook themselves and they realize how we, the math has been used in it. So this is the way how we learn in middle school. Thank you. Dahlia, I think you're gonna finish us off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just listening and, and listening to Valeria, Tim and Alice and, and Neelam in these stories, it really reminds us that the, the growth mindset and the connection to um, developing um, the confidence and appreciation of mathematics and it really comes back to these learning experiences. And as Neelam said, I mean, so much goes into that. So teaching in this way where the child is at the center and we're de developing that confidence while um, uh, providing this content, rich content, um, really fosters this growth mindset. Um, they're happy and they're moving forward and taking risks. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. I think... Um... Uh, head of school may be joining us real quick. She'll she just is going to say hello. Valentina, are you here? I am. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I couldn't be here any sooner, even though this is always one of my favorite topics, math. Um, so thank you so much for participating. And uh, uh, we are delighted that we're now offering this new the Spotlight series, where most importantly, we can pull our incredible faculty uh, out on the forefront, they are the heart of the school, and so thank you, faculty, for being here and and taking using some of your very precious time to help uh, our community learn more about math and La Scuola. Thank you, Valentina. So we're almost at the end of our presentation and Q and A. If if you have any other questions, feel free to email us. We're all here. You can email. The teachers or Sally and me or Valentina, just let us know if there are any remaining questions and we will share the recording with you as well. Okay. Ciao, ciao. Grazie mille. Thank you.